Produced by Malik. What is going on world? Welcome back to Malik's Water Garden. Today's going to be a really fun video because this is going to be talking about how to breed zebra plecos. This is a collaborative effort between myself, Dr. Thomas, as well as Paul Aqua. I'll put his YouTube link down below so you can check his channel out and give him a subscription. A lot of the videos that are uh, YouTube uh, clips that you're going to see in the video are going to be tanks in Europe of their tanks. So I highly recommend watching the video till the end because you are going to get a lot of valuable information about how to breed zebra plecos. The first thing I'm going to say is I have been quite fortunate here in Ont Ontario. I get all my water from Lake Ontario. This is a giant body of water and uh, it's quite stable and it comes out at about 163 parts per million in total hardness. Now, I don't actually check my carbonate hardness. I do know that it's about 80 parts per million or a little over four of carbonate hardness and the rest is like magnesium sulfate and other types of trace metals. Now, beyond that, I don't actually measure it or any other things. I don't actually have any tools to measure carbonate hardness and I don't need to do that type of stuff mostly because my fish do spawn quite readily. The only things that are a little finicky right now are the zebra pecos, but they are getting ready to spawn and uh, I am actually quite fortunate because a few oak leaves actually brought my pH down to about 6.8 in this tank and uh, and the carbon hardness actually probably has gone down and the water is quite stable. The nitrates are under 20 parts per million and uh, I just did a water change actually which brought the pH up. So uh, I mean, uh, but the fish are showing a lot of spawning behavior. Now that is not the case for a lot of people and Dr. Thomas actually really stressed that earlier today and he said everybody's water is quite different and uh, we actually both agree on this a uh, person might have water that is a hundred parts per million whereas I might have water that's a hundred and eighty parts per million or two hundred parts per million and my water could be more favorable to spawning this fish than the person that has a hundred parts per million of hardness now why is that the person that has a hundred parts per million in hardness might have all hundred parts per million in calcium hardness or carbonate hardness while my hardness of 200 parts per million could all just be general hardness which is magnesium sulfate and other salts and no calcium carbonate or very low amounts of calcium carbonate. Now uh, the thing that these animals require is low calcium carbonate concentrations to spawn. That is something that uh, a lot of people have uh, stressed to me and uh, I've actually also co correlated this with a lot of other people that have bred these guys quite successfully now. Now in Toronto, we are quite fortunate because zebra plecos spawn in our water quite easily. So we don't actually have to worry about any of this stuff we are going to be talking in this video. So if you are in Toronto, uh, this stuff does not apply to any of you guys to spawn your zebra plecos or hype ancestors because you do have quite favorable water here. And uh, a, a few simple things like using almond leaves and oak leaves and stuff like that can get your water to, to the level where you want it to get. And uh, my friend Herrera who lives down the street uh, from me about 30 minutes away actually it's not that far uh big ups to herrera he's a quite successful zebra plecos breeder he's been keeping them for like less than six months i think and he's gotten over 40 fry now and uh he's quite successful with them so big shout out to him and uh, he said the same thing he said if you just want to bring the hardness down just you know use a little bit of ro water you know which is what uh, he does and uh, in my case i use water that i filter to my peak filter and uh, I'm actually going to be using something called Safety Sorb in the future. So, I mean, I'm going to be making an update on that coming up. So, stay tuned for that and subscribe if you haven't for that update as well as the rest of this video series, which is going to be coming out shortly after this video. Now, having said that, the first thing I'm going to say is uh, this is advanced level stuff. And uh, I highly recommend if you are going to be doing this, you take a, a first step in keeping things like Caradina shrimp and maintaining RO types of uh, environments where you remineralize your water using remineralizer agent and stuff like that. And that's something Herrera recommended as well. When I was telling him I was gonna make the video, he said, put this in the video. And uh, Dr. Thomas also said that, you know, when you are doing this, you have to be really careful. And uh, that uh, you have to be make sure that uh, you do not crash your pH, essentially. So the first thing I'm gonna say, this is what I wanna say, is that you should get yourself one of these guys, which is a pH meter. You can get one of these on Amazon. It's uh, quite uh, relatively inexpensive. It's about $20. Have one of these. Make sure it's in working condition. Have it calibrated and use it all the time, every day. I would recommend testing your water every single day. It takes you less than five seconds to stick this into your tank. While you're feeding, make sure your pH is where it should be and that it is not crashing because what I'm going to tell you next 
is gonna be where you are gonna bring your tank to the level where your pH could potentially crash to an unsafe level for your fish. So this is how a lot of people lose their zebra playco. So that's a disclaimer I'm gonna give you guys right now that uh, if you do lose your fish, it is your fault because it is not my fault. I'm not there with you and I didn't do it so that uh, if something does happen, you have to really be uh, responsible for it. So be a responsible fish keeper and really make sure you are do you do understand what you are doing and that you are playing with uh, a really sensitive aspect of your environment here. Now, removing calcium carbonate out of your water essentially means you are removing the buffering capacity of your water. Your water is staying at a stable pH of let's say 7 or 7.4 in my case or whatever it is or 6.8 or 6.9 or even 7.9 or 8 or 8.4 whatever pH it is if it is staying at that pH over a period of time that's because you have a decent amount of calcium carbonate in the water to buffer that water. Now over time as acids build up in your tank whether by means of you putting stuff in the tank or just by your fish pooping and other debris other organics accumulating essentially organic debris creates acids these acids react with your calcium carbonate and nullifies your calcium carbonate and then essentially uses up the calcium carbonate uh, other things that can use up your calcium carbonate is your snails your shrimp as well as your plants so all these things take up a decent amount of calcium carbonate over time. So if your tank is heavily planted like some of my tanks, you can have a depletion of calcium carbonate over time. Also, if you have a heavy snail population, this is what's actually happening in this tank, as well as in this tank, the snails take up a decent amount of calcium carbonate. So if I didn't do my water changes, let's say for four, five, six weeks, and for whatever reason, the calcium carbonate content could get depleted in my tank. Now, added on top of that, if I use like oak leaves, which I do in a lot of my tanks, you'll see oak leaves in all my tanks actually. So then that creates more tannins and acids and stuff. And the, the result of that is your pH starting to go down. Now I actually had the, measured the pH of a 6.74 in this tank earlier today before the water change. And this tank actually was at 6.4 yesterday I measured it. Uh, I actually measured both tanks yesterday. This was actually stable at 6.7 yesterday. And it went down to 6.7. Uh, 6 uh, it was actually at the seven, same amount today at 6.74. And this was at 6.4 yesterday. And I put tap water in here and I brought it up to 6.9. And then it stabilized at 6.8. And uh, today I did a 60% water change out of here. 60 or actually 70%, like about that much. And uh, I put 30% water from here, which has really low nitrates and uh, a pH of 6.8 or 6.74 and uh, I filled it back up to like about there which is and then I filled the rest of the 40% up with uh, my aged tap water and I brought the pH in here now to about 7.3 7.4 and this tank is the same deal I put out about 30% water in here so it was about there and I put that much water back in and the pH in here is about 7.3 7.4 now over time uh, once I so what I essentially did was I added more calcium carbonate okay uh, in my water, in my, during my water change. Because there is no nitrates in my water, uh, the, the, the only thing that I actually added into the, the, the tank is more magnesium sulfate and other types of salts that is in my water, which is about uh, six, 80, 85 parts per million and about 80 parts per million of calcium carbonate. So whatever amount of water, which is the 30% I put, has about 80 parts per million calcium carbonate. It dissolves into the rest of the water and now whatever amount in here is there so I mean that's for for the sake of the argument let's say there's 50 parts per million calcium carbonate over time these uh, organic material will take up the calcium carbonate it will, will create acids and the acids will react with the calcium carbonate and uh, it will then use up more of the calcium carbonate at that point the pH will start going down so once the calcium carbonate is more mostly depleted the pH starts going down. So this is where you, your zebra placos ideally and most of your hype ancestors do spawn. Like I've noticed that with my L471s, I've noticed that with these guys, I've noticed that with a lot of my other hype ancestors as well. This is where these fish start spawning. But this is where you also start going into the trouble zone. Let's start calling this area where your pH starts crashing. That's your trouble zone. So below 
16, 17 parts per million of calcium carbonate is your trouble zone. So that's where your pH starts going down. So you don't want to keep it there for too long. You want to get to that point, if possible, a little bit higher. Get your fish to spawn and then slowly bring up your hardness to where you are comfortable with. Essentially, your tap water hardness, possibly, if it is not too hard or somewhere where the hardness is a comfortable level where the pH is going to stay at a stable 7.0 or a little lower or a little higher. Now that's where this tank is at on a regular basis and the fish regularly spawn. But to get the trigger I've actually realized is where I would be using a bunch of oak leaves and stuff like that and you know the fish would sit there and the, the low nitrates plus the tannins plus the, the, the lowering of the carbonate hardness is where the fish essentially start to actually spawn but once the spawning does start I uh, can do a lot of water changes keep the maintain the nitrate levels below a certain level and uh, the fish continue to spawn and I don't have an issue getting them to keep spawning I've had a lot of success with this particular species this year as well as in the past and uh, it's the same same thing and I'm realizing what's going on now having these conversations with people like Dr. Thomas. Now I'm also going to be contacting Dr. Leandro Sosa and actually finding out what the actual KH, pH and the GH and uh, the, the temperature are of the water uh, in the Rio Zingu at the time when these fish are spawning as well as the actual spawning season in the wild for wild zebra plecos. So I'll be revealing that information to you as soon as I have that information from Dr. Leandro Sosa who is in Brazil, who is studying zebra plecos, who is one of the experts in the, in the field, actually studying these animals and helping conserve these animals. And uh, so I've actually learned this in the last few months. And uh, thank you so much, Dr. Leandro Sosa, for everything that you do. And I highly recommend checking out his channel, Ictio Zingu. I'll try to put a link to that down below as well. And uh, so basically, uh, aside from that, the knowledge that we have collectively uh, from uh, all the people that I've talked to as well as... Uh, the people that I've mentioned in this video, like Dr. Dr. Thomas, is that they spawn when the KH is close to zero. Now, uh, I'm just gonna stress this one more time. When the KH is zero, your pH is gonna go, whew, right? So you really have to maintain uh, a, a check on your pH, get a pH checker, or, you know, I really like this because I, I'm really OCD, I can always check the tank, you know, it's not a big deal for me. And when I'm feeding, I also check the pH. And uh, I also check the TDS to make sure that nothing has changed or if it has changed, how much change has occurred. So like, you know, for example, if the nitrates are going over time, up over time, every few days you might see a couple of parts per million. And that's quite normal because things accumulate, your evaporation, your salts accumulate as your water evaporates, stuff like that. But if you come, you checked it today or yesterday, and then you check it tomorrow and then there's a five or ten part jump the ten parts per million jump in your meter something has gone awry that's just not normal so I mean something could have died your uh, nitrites could be spiking a few parts per million of nitrites could be detrimental to your fish uh, your cycle could have crashed for some reason I mean it's not normal but it could happen so these things you have to really pay attention to and monitor and uh, the next thing we're going to be looking at is uh, aquarium uh, salts and uh, also different types of absorption products like uh, resins and uh, the thing I want to start using is called safety zorb so we'll be looking at this in upcoming video and the uh, resins is going to be the next video I think uh, Dr. Thomas really wanted to add that to this video I, but it's going to be quite long if I add the resin video resin part to this video so like we're going to be looking at aquarium resins and how to bring your uh, nitrites or um, nitrates down and other types of trace minerals out of your water using aquarium resins in the next coming video also a lot of other new updates are coming shortly after this so stay tuned subscribe if you haven't hit the notification icon so you get updated when all these videos get uploaded as always thank you so much for your support i love you all i'll see you in the next video god bless you all